everybody and welcome to session 37 of the Little Wolf Knits. I am Brianna and I'm the dyer designer human behind the Little Wolf Knits and this YouTube channel and it is so so lovely to be with you today. It is Tuesday April 9th and it is sunny and it is warm outside and I feel so energized so energized after what feels like two weeks of rain the sun is out and i am so excited to be here with y'all today i have a few things to talk about today some things i finished some things i'm still working on and a few things that are in the shop so i don't know how long we'll be here but if you want to see what i've been up to grab a cup of something whether it's cozy or boozy and grab your knitting and let's jump in. First, let's start by talking about what I'm wearing because it is the first time I am wearing this, certainly on this podcast, but I think in public, I don't think this has hit my grid. I know it hit my stories many months ago and I showed this last week, but not on my body. And it's so good. So this is my low tide tea. It is currently in testing. Testers are already loving it. I am so excited. I wanna make a million more. I am planning <laughs> so many more already and I already have two, but that's okay. This is a fingering weight pattern. This is cinnamon sugar on my sunfish base. And it's so cool, it has this tie detail on the bottom that is two I cords that you tie in a bow on either side and you can scrunch up or stretch out the bottom as much as you would like. And I think that's such a cute detail. It has this really cool um, like flat I cord edging on the neckline and the arms, and it's this drop shoulder design, so you don't have to make sleeves, but you still get like a little cap sleeve look, and it's so perfect. I'm so happy <laughs> that it is warm enough to wear this outside, and this colorway and this yarn will be available in the cereal box collection, so you'll be able to grab some of your own and twin with me in just a few weeks, which is so exciting. Um, okay, what else do we have to talk about? Let's maybe jump into admin and start there. We don't have too many more administrative things going on in the shop other than the things I've already shared. I do have a trunk show coming up for New Jersey Wool Walk on April 18th, which is a Thursday, just two weeks from now, at Grace and Pearl in Avon by the Sea. I will be bringing all of my cereal box collection yarns, which are super, super exciting. Um, it is the only place, or at least the first place, that you'll be able to get all of these yarns in person before the pre-order that's going to be opening the same week in my shop. And I do have another trunk show. Again, it hasn't officially been released yet, but I do plan on being in another New Jersey store on Saturday of the same week on April 20th. So just keep your eyes peeled on my Instagram at the Little Wolf Knits and on this channel to hear all of the details about where you could find me for my second trunk show in case you're not gonna be around on Thursday, but you will be around on Saturday. The only other things administratively that I wanted to share is one, the cereal box collection will be coming during that week of April. I think we're gonna be going for Wednesday, April 17th, I think is the plan. Um, but again, keep, my, uh, keep your eye out on all of my info to find all the specifics on that. Make sure you're on my newsletter if you're not already and make sure you're following me, turn on notifications both here on YouTube and Instagram to be the first to find out all of the details on that collection launch. The only other thing I have to say is that we have a new Mal starting soon. Not quite yet, but again, keep your eyes peeled. Something very fun, sunny, summery is coming your way and it is back for its third year. And I think you're gonna be just as excited as you have been for the last 
two years. Now that we've gotten all of that out of the way, let's jump into things that I finished because I have a few things to show you. First, let's start with the knitting because I have finished my second low tide tee sample and I love it. <laughs> Look at it. Um, this is, I mean, I love this, don't get me wrong, the tonal is amazing, but this is also something I love. Oh, I need to do a little color analysis. Hmm. But this is, again, a second low tide tee, and this is Michael Likes It on my laser base, which is a single ply, and I made the same exact size. Look at the drape on this one. I did add about two inches of length to the bottom, but the drape, man, I love my sunfish and the drape of 7525 is amazing, but nothing beats a single ply. And yeah, I just really, really love this one. Again, the ties on the bottom. For these aglets, I went with a rose gold, whereas my first sample, I did a matte black, which I thought was a fun contrast. This was a little bit more matchy, but I love it. You're definitely gonna see this one coming very soon. And I will have this yarn available, obviously during the cereal box collection launch, but also at my trunk shows for New Jersey Wool Walk. So be sure uh, to have your project plans ready and maybe I will try and release yardage early uh, if I have any ideas from testers by the time those trunk shows come or maybe I will just give like tentative estimated yardage, order more yarn just in case and you don't want to wait so that people can match me. Oh man, it's so good. So that is my first finished object and I love it so much, I couldn't decide which one I wanted to wear today. I'll be honest, but since I already have these jeans on, I think I like this tone with, it looks cute, with a darker blue jean or a tan pant. And this one goes a little bit more either direction. So this one won, but just for today, I'm sure I'll be wearing that one maybe tomorrow because it's gonna be warm again then. That is the only knitting thing I finished this week, but I have done a fair amount of spinning and I will say it is thanks to Andrea Mowry and her 100 day challenge. I have two skeins, one is quite large and one is quite small. Let's start with the large one. So you have seen my single plies of my Hello Sunshine by Nest Fiber my Malabrigo Noob in Arco Iris and Diana. And then I applied the three of them together and I did not know what it was going to look like. And I was wrong. I, I'm still really understanding color theory when it comes to spinning yarn and plying yarn. I love it, but it looks so different than I thought it was going to look like. And I'm curious to see if you're going to have the same experience. It is still on the bobbin. So this is technically a finished object. It's not fully finished. I might show it again once it's in the skein just so you can see, but I have spun and plied this giant bobbin from those three singles. So this is a three ply yarn and I'm glad I put on this bobbin because you can see all the color shifts and changes. And again, it's so different than I thought it was going to be. So, yeah, it's quite springy. And br it's still pretty bright. I don't know. I'm liking it. It's just, it's just so different than what I thought. So, this is all spun up. This is should be around 300 grams, maybe. Um just like 315, 350, maybe a little over 300 grams. And I was just letting it rest. I finished plying this yesterday, but maybe today I'm gonna put it on my Lazy Kate and, 
and use my Nitty Knobby and get this into a skein and then soak it. But something I'm learning with spinning that in the beginning I was getting really frustrated about when my bobbins that I was plying together were not perfectly even and I would run out of one for the other. I'd get upset, I'd split it, try and make it even onto another bobbin so I have a little bit more to ply together. It was a whole thing. And I'm now realizing and trying to come to peace with the fact that that is just part of the spinning journey. My bobbins aren't going to be perfect. I'm not perfect. That's the beauty of hand spun yarn. And I'm just needing to be okay with that, especially for something like a three ply. Because what happened was one of the plies ran out a good amount before the other two. So there was obviously no way I could rearrange things and then start plying with those two plies without it drastically changing the look of the yarn because I wasn't plying the same two plies or the same color together. So I broke my arm, I called it a skein, and I said, okay, you know what? These little bits of yarn, single plies that are on my bobbins are just gonna get scrapped and I have to be okay with that. And then I realized, well, if I'm gonna scrap these, one of my bobbins um, I could take apart like that one. The other one was wooden, so I was gonna have to unravel the entire thing. So I said, well, you know what? I'll just start a little mini skein and ply that together, if at least just for clearing the bobbins and then having, not wasting time just spinning a single ply off of a bobbin, but making something with it. So I also got this little two ply, I don't even know how much yarn this is, maybe 10 grams, but I thought it was cute. So this is Hello Sunshine and Diana compared to Hello Sunshine, Diana, and Arco Iris. They don't look so different to me if I'm being honest, but once I work them up, I'm sure I'll see the difference. Neither of these have been soaked, so I'm going to soak these today. Once that one's obviously hanged up, soak them, let them dry, and then maybe I'll see them again next week when they're all plump and plumed. But those are all of the things I finished this week, and I feel really proud with that little pile there. So let's switch over and talk about some of the things I've been working on this week, because I have certainly been putting a lot of work on some other things too. Let's start with my first whip that you've seen already. So this is in my Horse Feather Fiber Arts cow print bag. I love this so much. And these are my socks that you've seen for Michael that don't really have a deadline. But I've done a bit of knitting on them um, this week during movies and some other life events where I just needed something mindless to work round and around. Round, round, and around, in the round, and around. <laughs> oh man, I'm getting tangled. But here we go. I just pulled off my little sheepy. I have these adorable um, sheepy stitch stoppers that I still have in the shop. Um, and I put, since I have two socks in one bag with the same ball of yarn, I just put two needles together and then put a stopper on each of the pair of needles. And it's worked really well. Um, this is, like I said last time, a leftover of a black and ginger cookies on my sunfish base. Look how cool the pooling is. A little snickerdoodle charm. And this is where I was last week. So I have since finished the foot and finished the entire gusset. Look how cool it is once the stitch count changed and the pooling changed. But I have finished that on sock one. And again, my chocolate chip cookie charm down here is where I was last week. And I have again finished this foot and this entire gusset. And I'm now ready for two heels on these socks. Um, the heel and gusset are not necessarily something I can do during movies. If I'm at home or I have light and I can look down and see things, 
I can. It's pretty mindless once the heel is set up and I'm through the initial turn and counting stitches. Um, but not for movie theater knitting. So I'm going to work on these heels while I'm at home. And then once I get through the heels, these will be back to movie theater knitting for me while I just finish up the leg. Now, I don't have that much more yarn. Things are pulled out. It is quite a mess in here. And Michael told me he wanted a contrast heel for these, but he wasn't sure about the cuff. But once I show him how much yarn I have left, um, I'm probably going to ask because it seems like the options will be a super shorty or if he wants a little bit more leg, I can do a contrast cuff. So got a lot of work done on these and they look like they'll be done perhaps in the next week or so, even though these are not on a timeline. So that is really cool. Getting one gift item out of the way for April, even though this wasn't necessarily a thing I was counting as my gift item for April, because so far I've made at least one item for someone else every month of this year. And I'm really liking it, putting things ahead for Mother's Day, for Christmas, for birthdays. And it's been really nice to just have in the rotation and I'm finding I'm enjoying knitting for other people so much more than I ever have. So that's really cool. And this will be joining that list very soon. The second whip I have this week is something I had not started the last time we spoke. It was just a skein of yarn. So this is in my beautiful sister Heather bag. That's super fun cactus bag. And inside it, I'll show you the yarn first. We have another cereal yarn. This is my Fruit Loop inspired yarn. And this is called Follow Your Nose. And I just love it so much. It's so good. My friend MC of Blame the Knots, who if you don't follow her, is an incredible knitwear and crochet designer. So go check her out on YouTube. She has a really fun channel and on Instagram. But um, we are working on actually a knit and crochet collaboration for this whip that I'm about to show you. And when I sent her the yarn and she opened it, she was like, Brie, are you in your brights era? And I think I'm in my brights era. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. I love a neutral. I love a neutral. This is neutral to me. Um, but there's something about this in the summertime that just hits different, you know? But... Let me show you the actual whip. So like I said, we're doing a knit and crochet collaboration. I am doing a knit design and she is doing a sister, not twins, cousins, not sisters, sort of, I think sisters, not twins is a good fit. Um, crochet version of the same design and I'm so excited. It's actually inspired by my C Street cold shoulder sweater which will be coming out at the end of this month. That's a really fun fingering weight sweater with these cool shoulder cutouts and a little bit of a mock neck. Um, and it is a tank top version of that. So I'm not sure if we're calling it the C Street, C Street Tank or C Street Crop, um, although it doesn't need to be crop, but let me know what you think about potentially using that name or using another name. And here's what we have. This looks so tiny and one, it's on very small needles, but two, it's also pretty tiny because the top is a tank top that is um, a summer tank top. So the actual body of it is pretty narrow. And then I'll pick up along the neckband and the armholes to add a little bit of ribbing and build it out. But this is how the yarn is working up. And I am obsessed, obsessed with it. Look at the pooling in the center. Um, well, this is the back panel, the other is the front. Um, I have a little lobster claw on here and a little banana. Where I started, I'm going to move those. The banana will be for you all to know where I have shown you to. The last point that I have shown you and the lobster claw will be for me that I move daily or as I'm working on this to know what spot we're at. But I'm super, super excited about this. I did all of this in less than 24 hours. 
So I started this on Saturday night. I actually knit the entire back panel with the wrong needle. On Sunday, I was like, why is this smaller than I'm thinking? Like based on my row gauge, realized I used the wrong needle, ripped it out, knit the entire back panel again on Sunday, and then did the front also on Sunday and joined in the round. And I did just about an inch, not even, oh, not even, not even, not even. Um, I joined in the round and just did a few rounds to get this ready for movie knitting because this is now going to be stockinette in the round for several inches, which is perfect to work on at the movies. So I have my little Highland Cow stitch toppers on there. My yarn is all connected and ready to go. And this will be movie knitting. And this is going to be done probably by next week, if I'm being honest. So the tank is going to have two options. It's just going to have a regular tank top design, working straight, ribbing at the bottom. And then it's going to have a fun, um, like, scoop back option where there's short row shaping to create sort of a high-low circular scoop shape where the top goes down and around in the back. I'm not sure which version this is going to be. Just based on yardage, I only have one skein of this and I sent the others to MC. So uh, depending on what I wanna do, I know I'm gonna make the second sample with another color that I can make sure to have two skeins of. Um, depending on what I wanna do, I can just make this a straight version. I know I will have enough yarn for that. I could keep this, do the scoop bottom all in this, and then use a contrast color like green apple. It's right there. Let me grab it. Um, I could do a contrast color like green apple. I think this is gonna call, be called green apple a day. Um, and I could do the ribbing in green apple, or I could do a really fun color block option where the top is variegated and then the bottom is color blocked and shaping in this. I think I'm leaning toward that option, honestly. So what I might do to see on yardage is work on the body, probably tonight while I'm on the, at the movies, and then tomorrow I'll pick up and do the ribbing for the neckband and the armholes, see how much yardage I have left and then make a decision from there. I can either knit straight with the rest of this, add ribbing, knit straight with the rest of this, add the shaping, or color block this in. And if I color block this in, I'm gonna add the shaping. So those are my options. Let me know if you have a preference for what you think would look good for this tank. And this is um, not in testing yet, but should be in testing by the end of this month and could potentially be ready for a June release, which I think would be very, very exciting. That is the only other thing that I've been whipping on, whipping on um, this last week. And I feel like that's a lot. I've gotten a lot of things done, so that's cool. I do, now that I have finished my spinning and I have no whip on my spinning wheel, I am going to pick up the thing I showed last time, my bobbin spin, and start whipping on that um, today and get it started. I'm not going to finish it, and I am going to start my next wheel knitting project spin for a hundred the 100 day challenge because I've been really enjoying practicing my long draw, and I don't want to hold up on that just because I'm not working on my, I'm not finished with my spindle spin. So as long as I'm working on my spindle spin, I'm gonna start my wheel spin also. But those are the only plans that I have coming up. So who knows what you're gonna see next time. Hopefully next time you're gonna see those two objects finish, a few new things on the spindle and wheel, and then maybe another design cast on, maybe my second sample of this tank, who knows what I'll be whipping on by next week. That's kind of wild. Let's just talk for a second about things that are in the shop, which I've mentioned last week, but I just want to refresh and remind you of this week. Currently in 
the shop, we have a few things that I've already talked about, a few things new that have dropped, and a few things that are coming soon. The first thing that is in the shop that you've already heard about, but I want to remind you of, is my Moana Island Girl inspired countdown for July. You can get either a 15 day, a 30 day, or a single day. Um, and the 15 or 30 day are available in Sunfish or 420, so a fingering or a DK weight, which I know is very exciting for some people. And my single day option is available on any base, and those are available through the end of this month, and then I'm gonna have to start dyeing them up. So I know those orders are still trickling in. If you've been saving up for one, grab one. You can use shop pay installments and then pay it off over the course of a few months. Um, but don't miss out on one if you want one. Another new countdown that has hit the shop is our October countdown. And I'm so excited. I teased it last week. A lot of you messaged me or emailed me and it sounds like you were able to guess it from the very, very difficult clues that we gave last time. Just kidding, they were very straightforward and easy. But we are having a Beetlejuice countdown this year. So exciting. So for October, there will be a 13 day or a 30 day countdown. Again, fingering or DK weight or a fiber option. I'm not sure at this point whether it's going to be mixed fibers or just one fiber, but it will be one ounce a day. I'm so, so excited about that one. Really excited about that one. Um, really, really excited. But those are available in the shop. And then again, a single day option on any of my bases, including fiber. So super exciting. Make sure if you're a Beetlejuice fan, if you've heard about the second movie that's coming out this year, don't miss out on this countdown and go to the shop right now to grab yourself or a friend or grab one for yourself from someone else, a countdown. Then out of countdown news, we have our monthly clubs. I was gonna say March, but it's not March anymore, it's April. We have our two clubs for this month. Y'all have been loving both of these, which is so exciting. We have our From the Open Road Club, which is travel inspired, and this is Zion National Park. Love it. Steely blues, grays, pink, pinky reds, greens, browns. We love that. And then we have our Fandom Club, which we entered into Ted Lasso for this quarter and I'm so excited and we're starting off strong with a very obvious Ted Lasso believe again am I in my brights era I think I am but then like this is not my brights era but you know what I mean this brights era and we love it so believe and Zion National Park are both in the shop very exciting and then again I know I mentioned it at the top of the episode but my cereal box collection and all of the colorways will be coming to the shop Wednesday, April 17th. Let's just say it, let's make it official. So keep an eye out and I'm going to be sharing all of the colorways that will be included over the next week and a half, two weeks on my Instagram. Nope, that's next week. So the next week on my Instagram. Oh my goodness, that's next week. Okay, I have lots of work to do. But all of those will be coming in April, so. Like I said, follow me on Instagram, turn on notifications, get subscribed to my newsletter. Don't miss out on any of the things that are in the shop this April because they're super exciting. Last but not least, let's talk for a little bit about life stuff because some wild things have been happening here lately and they feel worth talking about. <laughs> last week a lot of things have happened I think we recorded this on Tuesday and then we went to the movies what did we watch you all will probably remember what we watched but I do not oh late night with the devil Is that what you watched it was fine it was it was fine it was cute um, a little hokey, not super scary, but it was cute. Um, so that happened on Wednesday. Maybe we watched House of Dragon. Honestly, I don't really remember what we did Wednesday and Thursday. I've been doing a lot of dyeing yarn and working. 
<laughs> so that's been taking up a lot of my time. On Friday, my dad actually came into town to visit and we had a really wonderful weekend of eating out of good restaurants and staying home and watching TV and movies and relaxing. And it was exactly the weekend I think all of us needed. So Friday he came in, we hung out in the afternoon, then we went to dinner at a spot called The Flying Pig that we really like, came home, watched some basketball, they watched the Knicks, I was fun. Um, and then we started Ted Lasso, because my dad has never seen Ted Lasso, and it's such a good show. I grew up playing soccer, he actually coached me throughout most of my life, and so since we watched it, we were like, you need to watch the show. He never set up Apple TV on his TV, the app. So he was like getting a little overwhelmed. He's like, I'll just watch it with you one day. So I'm like, okay. So I'm like, today's the day. Let's watch Ted Lasso. And I was ah, in all of my feels because that show was so good. We ended up watching over the course of the weekend, all of season one and half of season two. So Michael was like, you're probably just going to watch the rest of it, right? And I was like, yeah. I am, so I definitely am giving it a rewatch, which feels so good. But we did that on sat Saturday morning. We just hung out at the house, had breakfast, watched more Ted Lasso. Then we, maybe we didn't start Ted Lasso until Saturday, actually. But then we went to a movie, we went to see Monkey Man, which is Dev Patel's new movie. He wrote it, produced it, directed it, and acted in it, and it was so good, very interesting. Um, really good storyline. I, I really, really liked it. So if you were thinking about going to see it, go see it. If you're not thinking about it, consider it. Went to see that. Then we came home and we're hanging out. My dad was like, should we watch more Ted Lasso? I'm like, sure. <laughs> so we watched a lot more Ted Lasso. I was just knitting and hanging out the entire time. Um, and then we, I think I was finishing the armholes on these on this top and then we went to dinner on Saturday where'd we go we went to social still which was really good as always um came home watched more Ted Lasso and then went to bed and then Sunday we woke up we went to Billy's my dad loves Billy's came home watched a little bit more Ted Lasso and then he headed out so it was a really really great weekend um just to hang out and relax even though we are hosting someone, we don't usually get a weekend like that um, where we're just hanging out and relaxing. So that was really cool. And then Michael and I watched on Sunday night, we watched Drive with Ryan Gosling, which was good. Um, both of us were interested in seeing it. It was good. He didn't have too much dialogue. His character was kind of weird, but overall, good story, predictable, but good. And then yesterday we watched some um, House of the Dragon. I think we're like halfway through that season. I'm really liking it. Um, I'm liking it. There's, I think, a lot of names and new faces that I'm still trying to like put the pieces together and figure out because it's only season one. But I'm also able to pull a lot from what I already know from Game of Thrones. And I like how they're pulling in some things and, and doing that, which is pretty cool still no spoiler alert there's still no mention of the Starks so I'm curious if they're going to be brought into this at all or if their family is something that was in existence I don't know I'm curious about how Stark and if they're going to talk about that origin at all or maybe they won't get to it this season but we'll see we're watching it we're really liking it and tonight we're going to see another movie we're going to see The Last Omen which is a scary movie. I'm excited about that. And I'll be bringing this whip, my tank, to work on the body. And who knows where the rest of the week will take us. We have some fun things coming up, but we're not going to worry too much about that here. And I think, oh, <laughs> a few other things. So I'm still reading um, Turn of the Key. It's slower. I'm liking it, but I'm I'm still only like 60% of the way through it and I'm not reading it much. I'm only reading it at bedtime and I've been getting to bed later so I haven't been spending too much time reading it but I do have book club this week so I need to finish that. But a few crazy things happened this week. There was an earthquake on Friday. What? Um, as soon as it happened, our house was shaking. I've never been in an earthquake inside a structure before. I 
felt an earthquake in 2011. It happened in Virginia, but I was on the beach. So that was a really different experience. Things weren't like shaking. We just felt pounding. And here, as soon as the house started shaking, I called Michael. He answered. He was like, yep, it's happening here too. I was like, earthquake? He was like, I guess so. So within seconds, I was on Google. They were like, did you just feel that? So earthquake, Tewksbury, uh, New Jersey, which is only about 15, 20 minutes away from us. So we felt it pretty strong here. We're all good and safe, nothing bad happened, but that was pretty wild. And then yesterday, there was a solar eclipse. I didn't get to see it because I didn't have glasses. But I was with clients um, yesterday for most of the day, so I wouldn't have gotten a real chance to see it anyway. However, it did get pretty dark while I was sitting inside. I had to put my overheads on, which I don't normally do during the day because the sun totally disappeared and it was dark for about 20 minutes, 30 minutes. So that was cool. Seeing everyone's pictures of it was really cool. So there's just lots of funny, funky, rare occurrences that are happening on our earth, which I don't know, I'm just trying to enjoy and not overthink um, and just make space for it. But that is all that's actually been going on. So I'm gonna go and get to more knitting because my fingers are itching to do something and I don't know what, maybe I'll work on those heels of my socks. But until next time, take care of each other. Bye.